Hello everyone and welcome to The Good Old Gamer. So today, unfortunately, we don't have any more benchmark data to talk about because of a few hiccups that I ran into. So I decided, hey, let's talk about those as well as a lot of really positive things that I'm starting to see in the PC gaming and hardware community. So we're seeing some good stuff from people like Hardware Unboxed. He did a great video the other day and I want to highlight that and bring that to your attention. And I also want to talk about the reasonable prices that we're starting to see on CPUs, motherboards, and even GPUs. So that's what we're going to be talking about here today. A lot of small little things, do some housekeeping, and yeah, just have a chat about the state of the channel and the industry as far as I see it. So alrighty guys, let's jump right on in. So the first topic I want to talk about is what's going on with the testing. Well, I got in a bunch of 10th gen Intel CPUs. I have the Ryzen 5 5600 in here. Basically, I picked up every decent CPU under $200. And that's what I want to show is the fact that most gamers are going to be just fine with very, very budget friendly CPUs. And over the past few days, I've actually noticed that motherboard prices as well as CPU prices are actually continuing to decline, which means you're getting even more value out of the CPUs that I picked up. So they're even cheaper now. That's a good thing. So for example, on the previous test, I had the Ryzen systems at about $100 for the motherboard, considering that's about what decent B550 motherboards were going for at the time. Here today, however, they're going for about $20 less. And in reality, most motherboards, things like Z690, Z490, pretty much all of them are about $20 lower than where they were just a few weeks ago when these tests started. So that gives AMD a nice little jolt as that's even more value that something like a Ryzen 5600 can provide. Also, the 5600s on the AMD side are now far more price competitive. Micro Center here in the United States is selling them for $149. I got one off eBay for $162. So a nice range would be about $150 to about $170. You can pick one of those up and it makes AMD far more competitive. Now, in reality, AMD only really has one CPU. That is an option if you're looking for a budget gaming system, and that is the Ryzen 5600. I'm super excited. That's actually the thing that I want to test the most and show you guys how much better it is compared to something like a Ryzen 3600 and see how it compares to the Intel counterparts in and around the same price point. So I'm super excited about that. That's what I'm working on right now. However, I did have a hiccup. My B550 testing board, which was the MSI, uh, a pro board, it just decided to completely die on me, unfortunately, the other day. And I wasn't even doing any overclocking. It was just the board decided, hey, I've had enough and I'm calling it quits. It had uh, a weird little USB issue, but this was kind of a known issue on some of these boards. I'm like, I, I can make do without that. Everything was working fine enough for me. And then it just just decided, hey, I'm done. I'm not working anymore. And that's a bit unfortunate. So that has set me back a little bit. So I'm still working on the videos. Things are just a little bit more complicated. Uh, instead of waiting for a new board to come in, I'm using my main machine. I actually have it over here in my test area and I'm using the B550 board that I had there. However, I'm not hitting the same clocks and frequencies because this board, well, it's different. Uh, and on, honestly, it's just not as good. So that's throwing up uh, some issues. I went ahead and picked up a MSI B550 Tomahawk. That is a better board than the A Pro and hopefully that'll just work and we won't have issues moving forward into the future. Speaking of things screwing up, this was actually my fault guys, I messed up. The plan was is to refresh the whole lineup using an RX 6800 XT. Turns out when ordering things on eBay at three in the morning and not double checking every little nook and cranny, because if you search for a 6800 XT, sometimes you get a 6800 instead. So it was on me for not being more vigilant and double checking over everything. So when I got the 6800 XT, it was actually a 6800. The price that I paid for it, it's definitely not worth it. So that's got to go back. And honestly, I decided I'm just gonna continue to use the RTX 3060. I already have a bunch of numbers ready to go and I can just use 720p numbers. For anybody who gets upset by that, I'm sorry. You know, it's just not worth me investing with how fast GPU prices are falling right now. I'd rather just wait until later this year, new GPUs will be released. I can either pick up a current gen high-end GPU for a very reasonable price point or possibly even get something like a 4080, 4090 class GPU. And that also brings in extra content. So I'm just gonna return the 6800 and continue using what I have 
For me personally, as a gamer, the 3060 and RX 6600 level is all I really need. So basically, I'm spending a lot of money as just a tool for you guys, so this way we can do more accurate benchmarks. Um, people seem to just need CPU benchmarks at 1080p. Um, personally, that to me, that's like benchmarking GPUs only at 1080p. You're, you're sometimes going to be uh, CPU bound on those even at 1080p with a high-end GPU. So you're not getting the most accurate data, but that's what people like to see. It is what it is, guys. Using a 3060, some games without DLSS, I will have to go down to 720p. Just is what it is. Uh, basically, the numbers line up with like a 3090 at 1080p. I've done that before. I'll show you guys right here. I'll put it up in the video. The numbers overall are virtually the same. So you are still getting the same data, and we are not GPU bound using the settings that I'm using. But in the future, I'll just be able to hammer that home using uh, you know, a next-gen high-end graphics card, or like I said, maybe I'll pick up something like a 3080 Ti. Maybe they're like 500 bucks. That's not too bad, and that would work as well. Now, speaking of all the work and all the testing and everything, there have been fruits to the labor. We actually had Hardware Unboxed put out a very good video yesterday talking about overclocking. So Steve did a great video over here. He got his hands on the MSI Mortar Max with the B-Clock overclocking for Alder Lake. And he did a very excellent video. I really liked the way that he set it up. The thing that I liked the most is he added in IDA64 latency benchmarks. You can see the cache latencies and the increases by increasing the F-Clock. And what's very important to gaming and gaming overclocking is the memory latency. So his was like at 70 something nanoseconds. And with the overclock, it dropped it down to 47. And if you guys have been following the recent videos that I've been doing, lowering that, your memory latency, increases gaming performance by a lot because your CPU is sitting a lot less idle. Now, it seems that Steve may have removed that part from his video. I tried to find it. I wanted to show you guys and go, this is awesome. Mainstream reviewers are now giving you the data that you need, so this way you know what it is they're doing, how they're achieving this performance. I don't know if maybe the data was bad or wrong, if there was an error, maybe he just took it down because of that, uh, something didn't come out right, I don't know. But it was very nice to see it in there, and I would really encourage you guys, and Steve, if you're watching this, please continue to do that. This way, it's an apples to apples comparison, so this way, if you're like, okay, this CPU is running at 70 nanoseconds, this one's running at you know 50 or 47, like in this one, that actually does matter. That shows where a lot of the performance gains are coming from. So I really hope to see that more from the mainstream reviewers moving forward, them going ahead and being more transparent about the data that they have and the performance of the parts that they're using. But even without that information, the video is really good. And what this highlights to me is how much potential the Intel platform has if they would simply allow you to overclock all of their CPUs on a reasonably priced board. So I also hope that this shows Intel that on their next generation boards, so like the B760s and all of those, maybe they'll unlock the whole thing, not just the memory overclocking, and allow you to B clock overclock your lower end chips, or even better, just unlock the whole lineup and let people do what they want. That would be very excellent as sub 150 uh, you know, overclocking motherboards is really necessary for Intel to compete with AMD. Like I said, I wasn't super thrilled with the Ryzen 5600 at the $200 price point when the motherboards were going for about 100 bucks. Now, they're still expensive. If you buy a new B550, they're all about 130 which is about what a B660 costs right now. Um, so that's not great, but on the used market, you can get them, like I said, about $70 to $80 pretty regular. I got the B550 Tomahawk coming for $85 shipped. So it's a little bit of a better board, and I paid a little bit more money. So pairing, instead of a $200 CPU, like $150 or $160 CPU, like an $80 motherboard, that makes AMD extremely attractive to the budget audience. And that's very competitive with something like a 12400 or even the 12100 in terms of price to performance. So for Intel to overtake AMD again in the value segment, they could lower prices, come out with cheaper boards, or just unlock them. So I'm really hoping that's the direction, something like the uh, B660 Mortar Max. Sorry, there's so many B550s and all that. It's hard to remember which one you're talking about. But hopefully this new motherboard from MSI really gives Intel 
the jolt that they need to just go, all right, let's stop this arbitrary locking of things down. Let's just let people do what they want with the products that they buy. And that's gonna make them a much more attractive and much more valuable option moving forward. And especially with AM5 coming out with the really high barrier of entry, being that it's DDR5, just DDR5 alone is super expensive and not very good. Raptor Lake could have the easy victory by just doing this. Even if it loses by a couple of percentage points, it could be significantly cheaper to get into the platform. You could use cheaper DDR4, you could use faster DDR4, cheaper and faster than what DDR5 has to offer, and that would be an easy win. So I'm very excited to see if that's the direction that they take. Hopefully you guys can comment about that and be like, hey, Intel, this is the way forward unlock everything, make it cheap enough so that everybody can go ahead and get the maximum performance out of their CPUs. I really wanna see the mainstream guys really start to focus on this, try to get those nanoseconds down, see the performance. That's basically what I'm showing you guys in my videos. And you guys can tell 20% extra performance on Zen 2, on Zen 1, 15%, uh, I believe, I'm just going off the top of my head, on Alder Lake without anything but memory overclocking. A uh, 10 or 12 percent on Zen 3. These are pretty sizable gains. This is almost a generational leap just by tuning your system. So hopefully this is the direction we're going. I'm very excited. I'm very hopeful. GPUs are getting cheaper. A lot of cool stuff going on out there. And uh, after the last video, the memory tuning video that I did, I was reached out to test out some dual rank Samsung B die kits. And so that's on its way. So I'll also be doing that here in the not too distant future. So I can show you guys the difference between dual rank and single rank. It's going to be about five to 10% faster, but we'll have some fun checking that out. And yeah, so if you're out there and you're looking to get the most out of your systems, I'm really happy to say that the market is starting to cater to you and you guys out there that have supported me and people like Ivan over at Frame Chasers, who's been saying this for a long time now, this is great. It's more information, more accurate information, more detailed information. So hopefully we get it out there and we can change the community one video at a time, one like at a time, one sub at a time, one patron at a time. And I wanna thank all of you guys for your support. Everything's going awesome. Sorry things have gotten backed up a little bit, uh, but starting Wednesday, hopefully I'm gonna be right back in the swing of things when we take a look at the Ryzen 5 5600. And like I said, I'll compare that to the Ryzen 7 3700X and the simulated Ryzen 5 3600X. Well, alrighty guys, that's all I have for you here today. If you wanna chat live, I am doing live streams on Mondays and that's at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you wanna go ahead and join tomorrow in the live stream, chat about this sort of stuff, I'd love to see you there. Just make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you don't miss it. Well, alrighty guys, hope you have a happy Father's Day and I will catch you guys in the next video.